Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Hi, welcome to another episode of Silicon Valley Tech Art, Green and Sustainability, WWWSV Tags. Today I'm very honored to have a lady with me who's done so much, Deborah Kennedy. And you're an artist, you're not a professor, a teacher, a lecturer? Lecturer. And have done so much interesting things. I, I, I can't wait to hear about what you're doing now, but tell us a little bit about your history and, and you and your life. Oh, thank you, Heather, and uh, I'm just delighted to be here. Uh, so I was born on the East Coast and uh, I think I heard that clarion call, go west young woman, go west, and came out here in my early 20s and ended up living on a farm, milking cows. I used to be able to go and pick wild mushrooms, get scallions and fresh eggs and make my breakfast. And I was riding horses up in the hills in Marin. Uh, survived getting bucked off at a full gallop and uh, we also backpacked we'd go up in the mountains hike all day carrying those packs up there and then plunge into those ice cold mountain streams so I called it living in the heart of Western romance uh, I really love California so many beautiful areas uh, that are still and uh, wide open wild coast and mountains so I just uh, I loved it and when did you go to college for? Well, I started then. I was working in restaurants as a cook, and then I started doing construction work. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. And that was great because I could work for a while, make enough money, I could go to college. And I started in community college, then graduated from UC Berkeley in art, and then came to San Jose and got my master's of fine art down here. So were you doing frame-ups or what were you doing in construction? No, I did sheetrock taping, interior, exterior house painting. I helped put on a roof. I was sort of a Jane of all trades. Wow, yeah. that's, that's just amazing. So Berkeley, and then now, um, I guess, let me pull up the first, actually tell, tell us about your art career before I pull up the first three slides. Right, right. So uh, those slides really relate to the work I was doing when I came out of school. Okay. So I was doing something called installation work. Installation work is a contemporary form of sculpture. So you think of sculpture sitting on a pedestal. Installation work is dimensional work that's woven into the fabric of the environment that it's in. So I was very lucky. Uh, my so not installation work like in a hospital. It's installation right. in something that it, you may or may not realize it's art then? Well, let's look at that first slide. Okay, let's get bring to up the see, first slide. Yeah. You get to see it in action. Yeah, because this is amazing. So here's the first slide. Tell us about this. So my husband had a Fulbright grant, an academic grant, and we went to Germany, and I knew they would send us up to Berlin. The Fulbright group had been sending their scholars up there since they had to send them in on sealed military trains. But this was 1989, and the military police state that was ruling East Germany was still well in place. And this slide shows, I actually did four pieces. So I was the last artist to do a series of major works on the wall before Die Wende, before the wall came down. Let's bring up another slide here. I think the next one. <coughs> yes. So are these actually German police then? Yes, so East Germany, it was a military police state and they came out nine times while I was working on the piece. So uh, where that man is looking uh, off screen there, at his feet is the actual border between East Berlin and West Berlin. And, and this is, this, is that a gun or a camera in his arms? The, that man is videotaping. Okay. And they're standing in a defensive unit guarding him because just over the border at that man's feet, there are 150 people watching. And this was kind of a tense moment because uh, the man with the camera turned around and started videotaping the crowd. And those two men are Stasi. They were the secret police of East Berlin. East Berlin was one of the most effective and brutal uh, military police states. They used torture. They had almost 25% of the population. You couldn't even say anything in your own family home, right? 
So uh, what I did was I went and collected the hopes and fears of ordinary people from East Berlin, West Berlin, and America, and put them on those metal plates. So people divided by the walls spoke together about their basic concerns. So did you have them etched then? I, there was very thin metal and I actually uh, used like a stylus to press them in. So you actually wrote it yourself? Yeah. You so must I, have great penmanship. Uh, well, pretty good. <laughs> good do enough. You, do you have any photos of the actual close-up of that? Yes, I didn't include those, but from a distance it looks kind of like uh, a window. Yeah. So it picks up the light, and so that was another way of kind of challenging the notion of the wall, like light was coming through. And then people would go up closer. And you said this was 89? It was in, it, it, yeah, it was in the summer of 89. Wow. Um, so maybe later you can send us a, a photo of the close-up, and we could post that on the website. Oh, that would be fun. So that would be fun. Yeah. Let's pull up the last, the third slide on this, on this topic. So here is an article about it, and what's with this here? So when I returned home six months later, the wall fell. Who could imagine that, I, I mean, I talked to people in East Berlin when I was there and they were saying, very exciting what's happening in Russia, but here in East Germany, another 2,000 years, Hanukkah will be in power. Who could imagine in six months, something that was so, such a powerful system, so knit into the fabric of those people's lives, could suddenly just seem to evaporate overnight. Now, how does that relate to my environmental work? That kind of a change gives me tremendous hope that we can make these kind of profound changes that we need to make to improve our environmental situation. And you're a teacher right now or a professor or a lecturer? Explain that too for us. Right, right. So and, how, and how that kind of ties into what you've been doing and yeah. Teaching has been very important to me in my life. Uh, so it's very exciting to me to work with students, help them learn about their creative process, and find what they want to communicate about. And I mainly have taught in community colleges. I, I don't have a full-time position, so that's why I'm a lecturer. And, uh, but in, in City College, West Valley? San Jose City College. San Jose City yeah. College, yes. okay. So it's our local community college I was here. thinking it was Mission College, but okay, so city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in 1999, I was invited to have um, a, a museum show at the De Sassé Museum. The De Sassé is at Santa Clara University. And when I was invited to do that show, I developed a class in conjunction with it. So I taught for a number of years in their environmental studies program. At Santa Clara University. That's right. Let's pull um, two of those slides up. Let's pull the first one up now. And I think we have them in reverse order. But So tell us about this one here, and then we'll go to the other one that should be first. Right. This is uh, students from Santa Clara, and they're in my exhibition. And uh, so I taught a class. I exhibited a work that I did in conjunction with those students in the museum show. And then I, ha I hosted a lot of meetings with students. So what are they doing them. in this photo here? Well, let's go to the next one. I okay, think let's you'll go to the see next a little one. better uh, what that is. Okay, so in the front, what you're seeing is what's called the ring of life. Okay. This whole show, uh, this part of the show is called Project Nexus. And the top looks like maybe the tree of life with the roots yes, above, yes. sort of. I was really thinking about the burning bush okay. because it's a Jesuit institution. Okay. And it's one of the few times a plant was a symbol of the divine. So that circle right there was based on the research of a professor, Professor Billings. And he was the first botanist to really start understanding how uh, a living ecosystem supports a plant or an animal or a human being. So around the outer edge are all the forces and substances that act and interact to create a living environment. For example? So earth, air, fire, water, water plants, humans, our ancestors, but he broke it down a little bit more finely than and that. And so those are the elements on the outside. Right. Okay. And hanging in the background, what's hanging in the background besides the burning bush? We have uh, like a curtain of leaves. Okay. And then beyond that, there was an empty circle. So that represented to me the parts that are already gone. So uh, that's like things that have already become extinct. So say e extinction of animals and right, plants and right. various things. But on this side, we can still act. And that ring of life was actually an interactive sculpture. So I had this problem. I mean, the original circle was a drawing. 
how was I going to make those lines in space? So I actually used piano technology, uh, the pins and the wires so that I could tighten them. And then it became a musical instrument that people could play. So I had students create compositions to be played on that instrument. So that's what they were doing in the first one. They were playing yeah, they the were instruments. they were interacting with it. Interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. So is that exhibit, has it gone away? Is it in your home? Where's, where's the exhibit now? 